I'm very happy to see that we have people from all over the world, from different organizations, different, uh, different fields. So I think that we can share a wealth of opinions during these two days. And now I'm very happy to introduce uh, Kultur Project, who will come to talk to us about their initiatives. Kultur Project Berlin is a non-profit soci uh, non society working to promote network and mediate culture. And representing Kultur Project, we have Sandrine mikose Eikens, the head of the office of the Berlin Funds for Participatory Art Projects. Uh, Sandrine is a cultural scientist, uh, cultural scientist, uh, curator, and activist, and she has been dealing with questions of race and coloniality in the arts. In particular, with the continuities of colonial racist stereotypes of black people in German cultural pro uh, productions, and the exclusion of racialized people from arts institutions. She is also concerned with visual strategies of resistance and empowerment. And we also have with us Lisa, Lisa Schneibner, the coordinator of Interventions, which is a cultural uh, festival within Kultur Project. Interventions is a festival and conference on the subject of refugees in arts and education that will be taking place in two weeks' time. Um, Lisa Schneiber works as a production manager and co-creator for Interventions 2016. She's also a trained actor and cultural scientist and co-organized the independent conference Vernetz Elg uh, last October, sorry for my German, um, along with her colleague Sandrine mikose Eikens, which focused on raising more awareness for different forms of discrimination in the cultural sphere and discussing strategies on how to dismantle them. Um, please will you join me in a hearty round of applause for Kultur Project. Thank you. So we're going to conduct this session uh, more like an interview, and I'm going to first ask a couple of questions for both Sandrine and Lisa, and then we're going to open to the audience to ask a couple of questions. Can you hear us okay? Good. Okay. So we'll start with uh, Sandrine. Please, can you tell us a bit more about Kultur Project? Yeah, I'm, I'm not even sure I want to talk about Kultur Project okay. that much, because <laughs> it's really, we just both basically just ended up there like a couple of weeks ago, so. so and it's a really, project. <laughs> yes, exactly. And it's, it's kind of like a really big institution that hosts a lot of, a, vari a variety of different services relating to the Berlin art scene. And it's, it's so vast that it wouldn't make a lot of sense for me to, and also I don't know all the sections yet, I think. <laughs> um, it's probably more interesting to talk about um, the Fund for Participatory Arts Projects, which I'm the head of, because um, I think that relates much more to, the, to your subject also. Because um, Kultur Projekte, yes, as every other institution, um, parts of it have been dealing with the subject of refugees, um, but there hasn't been any interesting in, initiatives as compared to what else is going on in the city. And I think um, what's going on in the fund is really kind of like outstanding at least for, at least for Germany or the Berlin, Berlin art scene because um, first of all, we're in a funding institution, which the title already um, explains basically. So if you have um, an interest in working on various arts projects, with partners from education and the sector of youth, um, projects for youngsters, children, um, young adults um, that provide act access to um, cultural and artistic practice, to especially to those who usually don't have it, um, then this is where you go to. You come to us and um, we have two different funding streams. Three times a year you can apply for um, projects up to um, 20,000 euros in the one funding stream and then the other one is basically open and it's like up from 20,000 um, to like, uh, I don't know, I think we have a million or something altogether, but uh, obviously we want to fund more than one project. So um, yeah, and um, because of the influx of all these different uh, project applications that have to do with the subject of refugees, um, we just had a deadline kind of two weeks ago, and I think out of 217 projects, 170 were dealing with the subject. Um, actually, before I arrived, the person who um, uh, who was work was on, in my seat before um, decided that we need some kind of initiative um, to diversify the institution, not only in terms of how we deal with the subject of refugees, but also just in general, because um, most of the projects are projects that are addressing people of, right, of migrant background, um, people who are 
economically disadvantaged, uh, socially disadvantaged, but it's very rare that these groups, um, which also exist as organized communities, come to us and apply for money. So usually you will have white Germans who will do projects for students or kids or um, uh, youngsters with migrant, one or the other migrant background, POC, whatever you want to call it, or even refugees. Um, and we wanted to make sure that these groups would be able to apply for the funding themselves. So we launched this initiative. This is how I actually initially ended up at the fund as the um, yeah, responsible person for this initiative. But then um, <laughs> my uh, colleague left, and so I ended up where I'm now, and I have somebody else taking over for me. Um, mm -hmm. It's a complicated story in the end. <laughs> but still, we have this cooperation. We also work with two other NGOs. And um, we're just at the beginning of it. It's, it's about finding out um, what difficulties people encounter when they're trying to apply, um, whom we are actually reaching, who, does, who knows that we exist in the first place, um, uh, whether people know how to, how, to, how to apply. It's also not that easy sometimes to write these application, for, like to, to fill in the application forms. Um, it's almost like a science to itself, and there's like a, a large community of people, like who are cultural workers who just do that, who, who sustain themselves by writing these applications. And so not everybody can do that. It's usually the same, like, usual suspects who come and, and write these applications. So um, the idea is to change that. And I think that's the interesting thing Very interesting. that's happening there right now. And um, what do you think needs to be done to, to facilitate access to all people who want to apply? Um, yeah, different things. I mean, as, as always with these diversity measures, it's, you can't expect people to just show up at your doorstep all of a sudden just because you decided that now you're ready to take them in. So there has to be an effort from our side to also go out and find people, to make people know that we exist. Um, we started by translating um, the information about the application process into, I think, seven or eight different languages, among which are also Farsi and um, Arabic, so that people can at least understand what it is that they would have to provide and what the conditions are, even though the applications themselves still have to be handed in in German, unfortunately, because we do not have the capacity to um, yeah, read applications in all the languages of the world so far, but um, maybe soon. Um, yeah, so we're trying to just um, yeah, go out into the communities, get better non known to network in certain ways, to find volunteers who are willing to support um, people who want to apply but don't know how and have no experience, maybe if they have an expertise in writing these applications to, um, to bring these people together so that they can help each other. Um, and um, I think it's also really important to strengthen a certain type of discourse because it's not that we don't want to have applications written by white Germans that want to do something for refugees, but it would be nice if there would be um, a more critical perspective in that. And I think um, very often when we talk about um, displacement and asylum in Germany, it's, it's, it's being talked about as if there is no history of migration and racism in Germany, and there is. So it's not this the whole story didn't just start last summer when the majority of German society just uh, found out that there's refugees um, coming to Germany. There were refugees before. Mm -hmm. There have been uh, refugee self-organizations for many decades in Germany that are now completely invisible um, in, in the discourse that we're having at the moment. And of course, there's loads and loads of um, people of color, of, of people with migrant background, also in the second and third generation, who are organized, who have already arrived, who have already actually been through the process that we are expecting all these people to go through now, but nobody asks them about their experience. And I think that's a, a well of, um, of opportunity that we, really, that we don't, don't consider. And I think that has to be something that um, I really want to see this kind of expertise and this kind of knowledge and these kind of people also being involved in these projects. And I don't want to see more projects. We just had a conversation with um, Bilal, who's sitting somewhere here, I think, and he was telling us about the manifold uh, cooking and uh, arts project that he's, he's involved in. It's really nice that these things exist, but I think um, they're not really worth anything if we don't talk about um, the underlying structures of why we are having certain problems in the first place and why people are also so um, sidelined in Germany. Also, I'm, I'm not really quite agreeing with the idea of uh, 
parallel societies um, of migrants in Germany, I really think we have like a large parallel society of, um, of white Germans who are not really um, involved with everybody else who's here because usually if you look around, um, in my experience, it's um, people with migrant background have friends and colleagues from many different communities mm -hmm. and most white Germans will not. And so I think um, if we talk about integration, it's rather, I really see it from the other side rather than um, expecting of people who come here to um, integrate into some kind of German culture, which I also think, don't think exists because it's already extremely diverse and there's not just like one type of um, one type of people here. There's so many, many different cultures already there and it's also not, I don't know, I don't see culture as something aesthetic so that you can integrate and tune and I don't think it's a problem to have like separate different kinds of cultures existing um, next to each other. Absolutely. No, I really agree that there's not just one culture that fits all, especially in Germany. It's a very diverse country and I think we need to first of all recognize how diverse Germany is and, and recognize not mine, but, but the German culture, so that you can welcome people into the many different ways of life here. And I, I wanted to ask as well, what projects that have been selected, uh, selected that do deal with cultural integration, which ones do you think have been most successful and why? I mean, uh, we have a jury who, um, who chooses the projects most of the time, and then we have a board of advisors, and um, they don't always agree, so, and they also don't always agree with me, that's a, a whole different story. Complicated um, process. So, so far, I think there's a lot of very large, expensive projects that are not as successful as they could be, I think, and then there are um, a couple of smaller initiatives, which are mostly refugee initiatives, uh, ref initiatives by, by refugees mm -hmm. who are working on their own subjects, mostly um, by themselves, maybe with the help of somebody, but they decide what they find interesting and what, what is important to them. Um, and that's the Refugee Club Impulse, for example, which is like a theater project, um, which, uh, I don't know how many people are actually in charge there, but I know that the people who are really in charge are, are refugees themselves. And um, then there's the Jugendtheaterbüro, uh, which is also a theater, like a, a a theater project for youngsters, um, mostly also with migrant background, um, uh, who are also uh, where the youngsters are very much in charge as well. And I think these are really this is one of the projects where I know it's quite successful because a lot of those youngsters really ended up picking up um, one or the other profession, a theater profession, um, as a career as well. And I think that's really something that, um, where you can measure the success. If you have a project where you just, it's nice if, you, if people have access to painting and acting and writing, but then in the end, if you're confronted with a cultural, sphere that doesn't let you in in the first place when you want to take it to a professional level. I mean, it's really hard for people of migrant background to even get into an art school in Germany. So what's the point? It's like, it's nice for the moment, but there has to be another perspective in there as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I, from, from what I took, it was very important the, the, the projects that you thought were successful mm -hmm. were often the ones that were led, their initiatives uh, yes. by, by refugees. Yeah. And I wanted to ask, what other factors do you think are important for a, a cultural integration project to be successful? Uh, I think, as I already said, a lot of those very prominent, very visible um, cultural projects at the moment do not deal with the underlying causes for displacement and um, the situation that refugees find themselves in when they come here. Um, and I think it's really important that if there's such a, not that you have to force this, these things on people if they don't want to talk about it, but I think it's really important that there's space being made to also talk about the R word, which is really like a taboo in German. You can't, it's really hard to say it, and, um, but it's everywhere and it's like so, such a fundamental um, part of um, those people's everyday experiences that I think it's, it's really futile if you have a project where this is not at least allowed for some space to talk about these things. Um, and it doesn't need to be the central subject, but I think it's important that um, uh, people feel like they have 
some kind of safe space where they, if they feel like it, this can be thematized and um, only then can they be taken seriously as well. Mm -hmm. I think it's very important that safe space because it's hard to bring up these topics, mm -hmm. especially when there isn't already a, a sense of underlying trust. Yes. So sometimes these initiatives like a, a cooking community or arts projects can be the tool to later kind of delve into these, um, these more delicate subjects. Um, and the last question I wanted to ask you was, what do you think is the role of cultural education both for refugees and Germans, which is something we talked about a bit, mm -hmm. in the integration process of refugees in German society? I don't really like to look at cultural education in that way, because I think for, in the first place for me, it's, like, it's the right that everybody should have the right to make art, even if it's bad art, and it doesn't have to have um, the benefit of integrating anybody into anything necessarily. So that's like, for me, as long as this is not there, I don't really care about it. Um, I mean, we all know that, of course, art can do a lot of things. Um, the art sphere is a place where um, a country's or a society's identity is discussed, sometimes even shaped, sometimes created in a way. And um, if people, if a large, pa a large portion of the people who live in a country are not part of, this, of these processes, which is the case in Germany, if you don't see them on stage, if you don't see them in the movies, if they can't publish their books, if um, they cannot be in the, represent in the galleries, then um, it's a very one-sided story that we hear. And um, I think this visibility is, is, very, is very fundamental, is very crucial, mm -hmm. whether or not people choose or choose not to learn something about one or the other, I don't know, of their sides or something here. <laughs> I don't think they are. Um, I don't really care that much about that. But it's important that both voices are heard. Yes. And that everyone is visible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And um, we will open to the audience later for questions. But first of all, I wanted to ask Lisa, could you tell us a bit more about interventions, please? Yeah, so Interventions is a um, festival and conference that has been organized by Kulturprojekte for a couple of years now mm -hmm. um, on different topics. And um, last year they already had an intervention um, on the topic of refugees in arts and education because obviously it's a big topic right now also in the field of uh, cultural education. And I think originally um, Intervention, the festival, is to um, make um, Kulturprojekte and their work for cultural education more public and to, to gain some, some um, yeah, in, in interest for that and for, for their projects. Um, so, and now this year they decided to do, um, to do intervention again um, on the topic of refugees and arts and education. And um, me and most of the team that is um, organizing it right now um, only joined a couple of months ago. So we didn't organize the last event. And now what we try to do is um, to get it a little more, um, yeah, I mean, also in, in the things Sandrin said, um, um, to have focus more on self-organization and on, on also refugee self-organization, on grassroots organizations. Um, because last year, um, it was kind of a random um, spectrum of all kinds of projects that work with and for refugees. But... Um, also in trying to invite refugees to take part or to, to um, get to know these initiatives, but it was not so much about um, refugee self-organizations. And now what we're also trying to do is to connect. Um, um, there's not so many refugee self-organizations because it's pretty hard to organize yourselves when you are in the asylum process and um, have all these problems. Um, so, but there's some. Um, but as uh, Sandrine also mentioned, there's many, many um, migrant uh, communities and organizations who have been working on different topics that are um, similar to some of the problems the refugees face um, since decades in Germany. So um, all kinds of exclusions and all kinds of discriminations um, that, you, um, that you face in Germany um, have been discussed by these organizations, by these grassroots organizations, and they're um, most of the times not very well funded and they don't have much um, 
um, how do you call it, um, aufmerksamkeit, sorry. <laughs> Attention, yeah, they have not so much attention as they should have. And now um, people who have attention anyway jump in the field and start new projects. And our idea is um, to get some knowledge um, from the people who have been working with these topics for decades and also connect it to the refugee initiatives um, to show that certain problems don't end in Germany when you pass the asylum process because racism and uh, different forms of exclusion um, are still there. And um, yeah, so this intervention is about, um, is about connecting this and um, yeah, showing what's, what's the basis uh, what, um, for, yeah, and how, how, how diverse a culture in Germany is already mm -hmm. and has been all the time, actually. Um, but Germany has a big problem with um, recognizing that for some reason. <laughs> well, this is a great <laughs> initiative to try and overcome that problem. Um, and I'd like to know, how does the event engage with both refugees and the general public? It can be both directly or, or indirectly. Um, so what we tried, we have different workshops. And um, maybe to give an example, we have like 10 workshops for, on different topics. Like we have one of some of the basic topics like um, um, access to work, um, like the housing situation, um, education, um, also like for little children, like school or, or university, um, self-organization and also activism and arts and, um, and diversity in institutions. So there's uh, like 10 different topics kind of. And for example, in the workshop on um, university, uh, so we always try to um, um, bring together one refugee organization um, and one um, other organization, or like migrant organization in one workshop uh, or more, um, so that you have like this different perspectives um, on the same topic. And for example, in the university workshop, it's, um, we have the, initi the initiative Recht auf Uni, so right to university education, um, who work um, a lot about the the problem young people have to get into university because either their diplomas are not accepted or um, they fall under this little quota for foreigners, which is like 5% of the students, and so it's very hard for them to get a place and, and so on. Um, so this is a refugee self-organization who are working um, for better access to university. And then we have an initiative um, which is called Campus Racismus, uh, hashtag Campus Racism, who is, um, who is in university but is facing the problem of racism in university, um, which is not discussed very much in German universities. And um, then the third one is um, an initiative of the um, Art um, University Weissensee, um, foundation class, um, who is, uh, and this initiative is trying to um, provide some um, education, uh, some, some uh, university education for refugees, but focused on the topics that are also um, um, the most important ones, or like uh, also considering the situation that, for example, you lost all of your artistic work. Um, when you had to leave your country and that you need the um, possibility to um, redo it and all these kinds of things. So we try to bring different um, initiatives together um, to talk about one um, problem. Yeah. Does that answer the question? No, it definitely does. Okay. Thank you very much. And the next question is, is for both of you, or either of you really. So we were talking before that Germany is a very culturally diverse society, um, but do you think this is reflected in its cultural institutions? Nope. No. Okay, that's the short answer. Can we have a slightly... <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I mean, what is very interesting... I haven't been working on this topic uh, as long as Sandrine did. Um, so for me, it's only like three or four years that I have been observing what's happening. And until very recently, um, cultural institutions, big cultural institutions like theatres, I'm into theatres, so that's, that's what I know most about, um, have been very, very reluctant in talking about um, 
how the the um, actors, for example, are not diverse, how all of their stuff is not diverse, um, how the use of um, racist theater practices is totally um, unacceptable. And it was very, very, um, and still is, um, very difficult to discuss these topics because the institutions are totally not open to do that. And now, suddenly uh, many institutions are very keen on working um, with refugees. And then sometimes you wonder, okay, but um, wouldn't they have much a better base if they would have been op more open to um, diversity before? Because then they maybe would know what they're talking about in some topics, or there would be people in the theater who know mm -hmm. about that. Um, people who maybe have um, similar experience. And this is not the case now. So I think it's a very, I don't know how, too much, uh, how much to trust this pro process that's happening right now because you wonder how much knowledge there is and maybe you want to add something. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I already said that um, before, but I, uh, the, yes, you do see um, refugees on German theater stages now, but you see them in the background and they're mostly not paid or they're not paid the same wages as the actual actors are paid. And it doesn't usually change the internal structure of the institution. So, I mean, I'm not really sure where all of this is going. I'm expecting this whole refugee hype to just like last for a year or two and then this will be over. I don't know what's going to happen then and what, you know, how much will be left of, uh, of the enthusiasm that's, um, that we see at the moment. But um, it's, it's, this, it's the same basic issue as for everything else. If we don't talk about, um, if we do not talk about what has happened in the past 30, 40, 50 or more years, and yes, we talk a lot about um, Third Reich and uh, um, Holocaust and so on, but everything that happened before, we don't talk about colonialism and everything that came after and the way that these things are also connected, we don't talk about that. And so um, I think there's a million different reasons why the um, a German cultural sphere is as little diverse as it is. Um, but it has to do with the, with the structures that are just as everything, every other structure in Germany, very, very exclusive, um, to the point where as um, a child of migrant um, parents, you will think twice before you start an arts career. I mean, my, my father wasn't very happy about me becoming an artist. He wanted to, me to become a banker or something because it's just not something we don't have. Um, usually, if you're born in Germany as the child of migrant parents, you do not have um, the, um, the capital to become a starving artist because you don't have parents who can pay your rent and you don't have parents who can pay for school. And um, it just doesn't really go anywhere unless you're really, really successful. And then you cannot be really successful because you just you don't have the same access as everybody else. So becoming being successful, you have to be try so try four times as good as everybody else, mm -hmm. or just know the right people, or marry, or I don't know what it is that people do to like the few people whom you see. Um, there are a couple of examples like um, Ballhaus Naunienstraße or um, Gorky, where you see um, actors of color on stage, and also I guess sometimes um, writers of color behind stage and um, the woman who was actually the head of the whole thing is also a woman of color. But that's really, um, that's these two theaters and that's, that's that. And they're already being used to um, not diversify all the other theaters sometimes that are there tokens. because yeah. yeah, we already have those two so that's enough so everybody else can go there. And um, it's, a, it's a very long, we can make a conference about that. <laughs> maybe that'll be the next conference. Uh, I'm actually going to end my questions here and I'd like to maybe open it to the audience. Uh, does anyone have a question that they would like to ask Kultur Projekt? We have the wireless mics there. No question? Well, I have another one. <laughs> um, I, have, I wanted to know how can the audience take part in interventions or in any of the other Kultur Projekt initiatives? I mean, with interventions, it's uh, kind of easy because it's in two weeks and you can just come and join. Um, 
The only problem is the conference is already fully booked. So, but if you're really, really eager and you read this, I have a couple of these with me, then you can try to write an email and maybe um, you, you get in. But we have a festival on the Saturday, the 4th of June, and um, that's completely open. And you can join some guide tours um, to self-organizations in um, Kreuzberg. Um, um, around Marianneplatz, and there's also a festival with performances and with music um, all day long on Marianneplatz. So you're cordially invited to join. Thank you. Yeah, and with a fund, if you, I, I brought some flyers, I will leave them here. So if you want to apply, I don't know if there's very many artists here, I don't think so, but there are a couple. If there are, or if you want, you can just, um, we have a website, uh, it's um, kubinaut.de, I'm sure it's on the flyer, I'm not sure, I didn't read it actually, but um, you can just go to the website and find out when the deadlines are, and yeah. Okay, well thank you very much for, for joining us here today, and I'd like to ask the audience to please join me in a warm round of applause for Kulturprojekt. Thank you very much.